I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I am your host, Harry Simu. And on today's show, we're going to be talking Kieran Tierney, the Scottish fullback, much loved by the Arsenal fans, has been the subject of some transfer rumours. It looks as though there is a possibility that Kieran Tierney could be on his way this summer. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to react to that. We're going to discuss why Kieran Tierney being linked so heavily with a move away is a sign of progress at Arsenal Football Club. Even if people can't see it clearly, we'll get into all of that. We're also going to talk Reese Nelson too, uh, after it's emerged that Arsenal are said to be uh, sitting at the table with Reese Nelson uh, with regards to a new contract. Now, after that goal at the weekend, I'm not surprised. Are you? Uh, this is a pre-recorded uh, edition of the show, so there are no live comments for me to interact with. So uh, there'll probably be less of me sort of reacting to the comments, or there'll definitely be less of me reacting to the comments, and more of me getting to the point, which means it's probably going to be a slightly shorter edition. But anyway, um, let's get stuck into it. If you are, uh, of course, watching this on YouTube, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you are listening to us on the audio platforms, then, of course, please do leave us a review. That very much helps too. Right, Kieran Tierney, where has this all come from? So according to The Telegraph uh, and a number of other outlets, Arsenal uh, are willing to listen to offers for Kieran Tierney this summer. Now, the left-back, who has been a real fan favourite at Arsenal, is the subject of interest from Newcastle United, among other clubs. Uh, apparently, Eddie Howe is a long-term admirer of the Scotland International and uh, despite Kieran Tierney having three years remaining on his contract, which should, in theory, put the price up, Newcastle believe that they do stand a chance of landing uh, the former Celtic man because of his current situation at Arsenal. So let's talk a little bit about that first and foremost, because Kieran Tierney was somebody that when we signed him, we were all very excited about when he came into the team. I think we all sort of fell in love with him straight away. He's a bit of a throwback. He's your old school type fullback. He's so good going forward in terms of what he brings on the outside uh, of the winger. You know, at one point under Mikel Arteta in the early days, he was basically our most creative outlet. Now, you can look at that in two ways. You can say credit to Kieran Tierney, or you can say, what does that say about the rest of the team at that point? And I think there's a bit of both in it. But obviously, Arsenal have evolved as a football team and they're style of play has changed quite dramatically. And as a consequence, and as a result of that, Kieran Tini's kind of been left behind. Now, Kieran Tini's not been left behind because he's a bad fullback. I would argue that if you were looking at conventional fullbacks, if you were judging them on all the things that fullback traditionally does, Kieran Tini probably ranks higher than Alexander Zinchenko. If we played the flat back four, I know it is a flat back four on paper, but it rarely is that when you look at Arsenal uh, in the flesh. If we played in the old school way, then Kieran Tierney would be the much better fit. He's a far superior defender, I would argue. Better in one-on-one -on -one defensive situations. I think he's got more of those defensive instincts that you need to play at the top level. But Alexander Zinchenko has come in and has fit brilliantly into this system and has given us the ability, I think, to play in a different way, in a way that makes us less predictable, in a way that allows us to dominate midfield areas when we need to, but also allows us to push the likes of Granit Xhaka on in the half spaces when we need to as well. We can keep the width with Martinelli, knowing that Zinchenko is going to tuck in field. There's, there's so many things that Zinchenko's profile brings to the table. And this is not Kieran Tierney being bad. This is not me sitting here slagging him off. I think he's fantastic. But the truth is that in the way that Mikel Arteta wants to play, in the way that Arsenal have operated this season, Kieran Tierney just doesn't really fit. Now, we've talked about it at various points this season. I think there have been times where we've looked at Kieran Tierney trying to play the Zinchenko role, if you want to call it that, and looking a bit lost, not really understanding necessarily when to tuck in field, when to go back into his conventional left-back position. Um, obviously, the runs he makes forward are very, very different. He tends to go on the outside. Um, but with the wingers being instructed to really hold the touchline um, 
you know, a lot more frequently nowadays, that space for Kieran Tierney to get forward and be effective isn't really there. I'd argue that Kieran Tierney is someone who, when he gets into the final third, his first instinct is to put in a dangerous ball across the face of the six-yard box. When you look at the profile of forward that Arsenal have, maybe that's not the right thing either. So I don't think this is a case, as I keep on saying, of Kieran Tierney just falling off a cliff and being terrible. This is um, just a, an example of the evolution of the team. And the very fact that Kieran Tierney is being linked with a move away and some Arsenal fans are kind of understanding of why shows you how much the team has progressed. Because if you'd brought this conversation up 12 months ago, you'd have been ridiculed. But the truth is with Kieran Tierney, and we, and we have to be honest about this, is that he has had so many injury problems. He has struggled to be a consistent figure for Arsenal in terms of, you know, how much we'd have liked him to have played. We, we signed him with a view to him being the next Ashley Cole for Arsenal, the guy that could hold down that position for many years, get better and better, develop, grow with the team. But that isn't Kieran Tierney, unfortunately, because I'm, for whatever reason, his body lets him down and he's not able, um, you know, he's, he's not able to to perform in that way. He's not able to be relied upon. And I think that the fact that he is so unreliable um, was a big part as to why um, was a big part as to why Mikel Arteta went into the summer. Um, looking at left back options. Now, it, it's it's hard to kind of gauge how this all happened and how this all came about. But if I'm guessing, I would say that Mikel Arteta was probably quite happy with Kieran Tierney as a first choice option. Um, you know, looked at what was around, didn't really feel that there was anybody stand out who could come in and take over that role instantly and would do a better job, not within Arsenal's price range anyway. And then it became apparent that Alexander Zinchenko was available. And given Mikel's relationship with Zinchenko, the fact that he knows him like the back of his hand, that he understands all of his attributes, his character, his leadership qualities, I think when that opportunity came along, maybe that skewed the plans a little bit. And maybe, you know, just the fact that he was available meant that Arsenal were going to go in and get this guy, even though maybe at the start of the, the window, it probably wasn't in the top three, four priorities. I, I genuinely believe that. I don't think Arsenal went into the summer saying we need a, a fullback who can play that inverted role. What you saw from Arsenal previously was um, us be a little bit lopsided. So on the left side, we'd play with the overlapping fullback and on the right, we'd play with the inverted fullback. And this season, that's kind of changed a little bit because Zinchenko is now the inverted fullback. And what you actually see from Ben White nowadays is him bombing on on the outside a lot more than he did in the past. And that's why now Takahiro Tomiyasu doesn't look like the perfect fit on the right-hand side anymore because he doesn't really make those overlapping runs. And when he does, he doesn't really have the quality in possession, I don't think anyway, to make things happen in the final third. So there's been a little bit of a switch around and a little bit of a change around. And again, I don't think that was down to um, Mikel Arteta looking at Kieran Tierney and saying, I don't want you. I think the circumstance um, has dictated how this has gone. The opportunity to get hold of Alexander Zinchenko has, has accelerated the team's evolution, um, shifted the focus on the inverted fullback more so from the right uh, than to, uh, over to the left, I think, nowadays. And, um, and, and I think Kieran Tierney has been unlucky in that sense. But there would have been a, a nagging feeling in, or, or a, a nagging voice in the back of Mikel Arteta's head saying, look, man, you can base your game on Kieran Tierney. You could very much feel he is a long-term solution and someone that you want to keep at the club. But the truth is he's been injured so often and it's cost you the fact that you didn't have ample cover. You've probably been burnt by that and you, you don't really want to fall for that again. And, you know, Zinchenko's had his injury problems as well. Let's not pretend he hasn't. But I think with Kieran Tierney, because it's been over a long period of time and, and it predates Mikel Arteta's arrival at the football club as manager, I think that that was uh, a factor here. And I think that is part of the reason why I'm not like going mad about this or, or this possibility. As I said in a tweet this morning, the fact that Arsenal can even talk about or think about moving someone like Kieran Tierney on, sell him for actual money, and feel like they'll be okay is a sign of how far we've come and how much we've progressed. 
The injuries have been a big issue for Kieran Tierney, but as I keep saying, the evolution of the side and the difference in the way that we're currently playing and want to play um, makes him a little bit obsolete in some ways. Like, he's still probably the best left-back cover in the Premier League. There's no question about that. He's a fantastic player. But this is where, again, it's not just down to us as... Well, it's not at all down to us as fans, but it's not just down to Mikel Arteta and the club as well, because Kieran Tierney might look at this season and say... Guys, look, it was, it's been a fantastic season. Obviously, I've played my part. I expect him to play a huge part in the Europa League games, for example, coming up. But he might look at it and think, look, at my age, I need to be playing football. You know, I, I can't be a squad player. I feel like I'm better than that. And he'd be right to feel that he's better than that. But yeah, he, he just doesn't quite fit into the mould of what Mikel's looking for right now at left back. And that is as a consequence of the team's evolution. So Kieran Tierney may well kick up a fuss, may well kick up a stink. And I don't think that given how good his attitude's been, given how um, much of a professional he's been, I don't think that Arsenal would stand in his way if the right offer were to come in. Arsenal are in a much better position now in terms of their ability to sell players. When you're at the top of the league and you're looking down on everybody, your squad players all of a sudden have a much bigger value than they did in the past. Because now you're not just potentially selling to sides in the bottom half of the table. You know, if you're a club that's in eighth, for example, where we've been for a couple of seasons, if you're in that kind of position, even up to fifth, you know, the teams, you know, in the sort of bottom half of the table will look at your squad players and go, yeah, you know what, we'll have a bit of that. It'd be a good fit for us. But when you're top of the pile, now you start getting European contenders looking at your squad players. Newcastle United being the prime example here. So it puts you in a much better position. Newcastle United aren't short of a few quid. So Arsenal will certainly uh, want to make sure that they get what they feel the player is worth. He's got that three years remaining on his contract as well, which is huge in terms of his value and the price. But yeah, I just think there could be a situation here where Kieran Tierney says, I want to go because I'm not playing. And if that happens... Um, and you get the valuation that you want, then I don't think it's the end of the world. And I think there's a good chance it happens. But at the same time, there's a part of me that feels uncomfortable about selling such a high caliber player to a Premier League rival. And when I say Premier League rival, I mean a team in the same division, a team that will be fighting for European places, I'm sure, in the coming years um, and potentially the title if they if they do things right, Newcastle United. So the idea of selling to them, it, it does make me feel uncomfortable. I'm not on board with that. Uh, necessarily. But yeah, if Kieran Tierney wants to go, which could be the case given his situation at the moment, then you kind of just have to, you know, accept it, take it on the chin, I think, and um, and make sure that you are getting what, uh, what he's worth. And then you can go out and you can bring in another uh, potential player to cover um, Alexander Zinchenko, who's maybe a bit of a better fit to that specific role. Uh, Nuno Tavares is obviously out on loan. There's been a lot of talk about what his future holds. I mean, when he first went to Marseille, it was like the Nuno Tavares that we first saw at Arsenal. Exciting, strong, physical, powerful, um, you know, a real specimen, someone that was causing opponents down that left-hand side. Absolute nightmares. But in recent weeks, based on what I've been reading and based on some of the highlights I've been seeing, the Marseille fans are starting to see the Nuno Tavares that we saw towards the end, uh, just before he went out on that loan deal, where he's very rash. Um, he's an accident waiting to happen. He's got very little composure. And I think that, you know, that's coming through now at Marseille and, and maybe that's going to put them off of going out and signing him. But even still, we paid seven odd million pounds for Nuno Tavares to get him into the club, seven or eight million pounds, whatever it was. I'm sure we can get that back. I'm sure we can even make a little bit on top because there's been enough from Nuno Tavares to show that there is a player with potential in there and someone will take a look at him and someone will take a bit of a punt and a bit of a gamble when you're talking about those types of figures. So I don't think he's the the solution in the long term either to Alexander Zinchenko um, or, or the one that's going to step up if indeed uh, Kieran Tierney goes. So there's a lot of thinking for Arsenal to do over the summer, but right now this is not the kind of stuff that they can afford to be distracted by. You know, Kieran Tierney has a job to do. Kieran Tierney is an integral part of this squad. And Arsenal are battling on a couple of fronts now. Uh, the Europa League kicks in, of course, this Thursday, uh, where we travel to Sporting Lisbon. That won't be easy. And, uh, of course, Arsenal are still pushing for that Premier League title. So 
you know, he's got a role to play. He's got a part to play. And and if I were Mikel Arteta, I'd want to postpone uh, any conversations of this nature. I'm sure that's what he will be doing. I'm sure that's what the club will be doing as well. But it probably will be on Kieran Tierney's mind. There will be clubs circling him uh, because of how good a player he is. So we just kind of got to see where we're at in the summer. Um, yes, the club have the power with Kieran Tierney still having as long as he does uh, to run on his current deal. And that would dictate, um, you know, their ability to to get the, the fee that they want, ultimately, if someone really wants him. But at the same time, um, you know, if Kieran Tierney really does want to go and really does kick up a fuss, I don't think he'd do it in the wrong way, in a public way. But I do... Like, I find it hard to believe that Kieran Tierney, who was this star at Celtic and then come in and was the next big, big thing at Arsenal, will now look at himself and go, yeah, you know what, I'm OK and I'm content with being a squad player, a rotational player. I think he wants more. And and why not? You know, he's got the talent. The fitness issue has been the big problem for me and the reason why he hasn't fulfilled uh, his potential so far. But he's still a very, very good fullback. And I think he will need to back himself at some point if this continues and say, I need to go elsewhere and I need to play more regularly. So I understand it. If the player feels that way, then as a club, what are you doing holding on to him? You know, you you start to make plans uh, to replace him and you make sure that you get what you feel he's worth. And, and I feel like, as I keep saying, Arsenal are in a much better position to do that nowadays than they were in years gone by. But I don't dislike Kieran Tierney. I don't not rate him. I think he's fantastic. I just don't think he's the profile of left back that fits into this team right now. I think Zinchenko has given us a massive boost in terms of his leadership as well as what he brings on the pitch and how he helps us tactically, etc. I think that Mikel Arteta has really seen that with Zinchenko and he's one of those players that he, he wants him in the team every time now, regardless of the opponent, just because of uh, the other stuff as well. You know, we, we've we been talking for years about the need for leaders. People talked about Kieran Tierney as a potential Arsenal captain before Martin Odegaard got the armband. But the truth was that he wasn't fit enough and he wasn't available enough to be given um, such a responsibility, I don't think, anyway. Um, I think Mikel made the right choice with Odegaard. It's got to be someone who's playing week in, week out. Um, Martin Odegaard is that. And um, yeah, he's a bit similar to Kieran Tierney in that he leads by example rather than vocally. Zinchenko certainly is very vocal and you, he wears his heart on his sleeve. And I think that transmits into into not just into the stadium for the fans, but among the group as well. And, and I think just his impact has been bigger. Um, and that's, again, no disrespect to Kieran Tierney, but that's just what I've seen this season. And I did a pod uh, for our members, I think, uh, earlier on in the season. Uh, where we talked about the comparison between Tierney and Zinchenko, there is a difference between the two. It's undeniable. Um, so we discussed that at length and, and I came to the conclusion that, yeah, Zinchenko gives us more tactically, gives us more variety to our game. I'd rather have Kieran Tierney if we were sitting with 10 men behind the ball trying to defend a 1-0 lead. Absolutely. But this current iteration of Arsenal play more on the front foot than anything else. And so Zinchenko is the better fit currently and, and that's undeniable. So, be interesting to see how this goes, how this develops, whether we um, get some serious offers for Kieran Tierney in the summer. I think we probably will. Uh, will Newcastle be the front runners? Possibly. Will that appeal to Kieran Tierney? Maybe it will. You know, it's closer to home for him. Uh, you know, there's been a lot made of him being a little bit homesick in London. Uh, Newcastle is certainly a lot closer to the Scottish border than than Arsenal is. Uh, so he'll be able to hop back and forward, I'm sure, with much greater ease, which might help him on a personal level. Um and Newcastle are a club going places, you feel, as well. So it wouldn't be the worst move for him in the world. Just want to make sure that Arsenal get what they deserve in terms of the compensation slash transfer fee, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that's where we are on the Kieran Tierney situation. Let's um, let's move on then. Let's talk Reese Nelson uh, just quickly because um, obviously Reese Nelson scored an unbelievable goal the other day. Like, unbelievable um i thought he was fantastic when he came on i thought he had such a huge impact you know he came onto the pitch he um he just made things happen straight away he gave us another dynamic down the left hand side he took people on he was a lot more direct than emil smith rowe was i think he is in his nature as a player anyway but it was really kind of visible on saturday when we needed to kind of force the issue 
wonderful cross for Ben White's goal. Wonderful finish for the winning goal and, and what will go down as one of the greatest moments at Emirates Stadium ever um, in terms of the reaction to it, what it meant, uh, the timing of it, all of that. And it seems that, according to reports, Arsenal are now uh, sitting down with Reese Nelson over a new contract. Now, I think Mikel Arteta has been pleased with Reese Nelson um, even prior to, obviously, the weekend. This isn't just about the weekend. Now, it feels like it would be, it is because of the timing. I understand that. But Mikel trusted him to come on, didn't he, earlier in the season uh, against Nottingham Forest. And he did that and he scored a couple of goals and he was very, very impressive. Then, just when you felt like Reese Nelson was was clicking, he picked up an injury, and that injury kept him out for a long, long time. I think longer than a lot of us anticipated when we first saw him go down. He returned. He hasn't been in the squad a couple of times, but that has not been because Reese Nelson has been poor. It's been because Mikel Arteta needs to find the right balance on the substitutes bench in terms of the options he has available. And with Leandro Trossard coming in, with Gabriel Martinelli in the side, Bukayo Saka. Eddie and Ketia, um, you know, with all of those options, Fabio Vieira, you could argue you can play in one of those wide roles as well. Because of those options, he was left out of the squad a few times. And I think a lot of people started to think maybe this is this is it for Reese Nelson. Maybe his time at Arsenal is done. But the guy can't do any more than come off the bench when given the opportunity and impact football matches. And that is exactly what he's doing. I must admit that the jury has been out for me on Reese Nelson over the last couple of years. Uh, went on a loan spell, did relatively well out in the Netherlands, but I'll always sort of raise the point of the standard of the league. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it isn't the Premier League, right? So it's different. Uh, and you have to take that into consideration. We've seen lots of players tear it up in the Netherlands and come to the UK and just not be uh, impactful in any way, shape or form. Ask Tottenham about Vincent Janssen. So, you know, yeah, you you do sort of look at those loan spells and you you draw some conclusions, but you also have to be mindful of the fact that it doesn't make it a guarantee that he's going to come to the Premier League and perform. But Reese Nelson this season, when given opportunities, he's delivered, man. He's stepped up, he's produced, and uh, and in some really big, vital moments as well. And I look forward to seeing him in the Europa League, hopefully. I think he has to play now. Uh, when you look at the injury to Leandro Trossard, the fact that Eddie Nketi is still a doubt as well. I think he has to play Reese Nelson. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play again. People will argue that we shouldn't be giving players that have kind of been on the fringes for a long, long time and then had a couple of moments, a bit like Eddie Nketiah last season, uh, that we shouldn't be giving these players contracts. But what people always fail to realise or, or fail to put into the equation, I think anyway, based on the conversations that I have, is when you give a player a new contract when they're about to become a free agent, you're not paying a transfer fee. You're literally investing in the salary and the wages. And again, somebody like Reese Nelson might be at Arsenal for one or two more seasons, get to the age of sort of 25 and feel like actually, you know, this is not the place for me. I need to go. But if Reese Nelson has a proper contract, uh, a contract with some weight and some value behind it, then Reese Nelson becomes a more sellable asset and becomes an asset that Arsenal can go on and and. and and, and generate money from. The same can be said of Eddie and Ketia. Nobody thought when Eddie and Ketia, I beg your pardon, signed that deal, that he was going to be the starter up front. He's played up front very often because of the injury to Gabriel Jesus. But regardless of how you think he's done, and regardless of whether you think he's even a, a shadow on, on Gabriel Jesus, the truth of the matter is now, is that there will be clubs in the bottom half of the Premier League that might look at Eddie and Ketia come the summer that have the finances to be able to pay 15, 20, 25 million pounds for a centre forward. And we'll go, do you know what? He's done quite well at Arsenal, this guy. You know, maybe Arsenal's not his level, but we might be. And they've got him on a five year deal. So for us to get him, we're going to have to pay 20, 25 million pounds. And all of a sudden, that contract that you gave to Eddie and Ketia has been paid off before he's even fulfilled the entire time. So technically, you've made a profit. And that's what Arsenal are seeking to do with some of these young players as well. Don't be fooled. Don't think that just because Eddie Nketiah got given a five-year contract that Mikel Arteta was absolutely adamant and certain, or that Edu and the club were absolutely certain that he'd be a big part of the squad for the next five years. I don't think that at all. I think they, they've looked at how they can utilize what he brings to the table now, but also protect the value of the asset. 
Again, something Arsenal have done so, so badly over the years. And I think there's a similar thing going on with Reese Nelson. He's had a few great moments this season. Does that mean that Reese Nelson is the starting left winger for Arsenal moving forward? Absolutely not. It doesn't. But what it does mean is that Reese Nelson is now a sellable asset again. Reese Nelson is the type of player that you can flog now to, you know, teams in the top, just outside of the top seven, top eight of the Premier League for a hefty amount of money. Look how much Joe Willett went for. Look how much Alex Iwobi went for because of their contract situations, right? You've got to look at these things as examples. Arsenal are getting better and better at doing this type of business. And I think that if they do sign up Reese Nelson to a new contract, which by all accounts, it seems he's interested in signing, then, you know, uh, we either reap the rewards of his improvement or we reap the rewards of his value. So either way, I think it's a win-win for Arsenal. So that's my take uh, on those uh, two topics, those two subjects. Uh, thank you so, so much for tuning in to this edition of the show. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with our Sporting Lisbon preview. Remember, we'll be bringing you guys a watch along on the Chronicles of Aguna YouTube channel for that game. Really looking forward to that, by the way. Uh, can't wait to see some of you in the chat box and enjoy the game in your company. So do join me for that. Um, and uh, and we'll obviously bring you a post-match show a little bit later on in the evening as well, uh, which will be available to our audio listeners uh, from about probably about 9, 10 p.m. Uh, that evening as well. So lots and lots uh, of content coming your way. Uh, thank you as always for tuning in. I will see you all soon. Until next time. Goodbye. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.